Hey guys, it's John, and welcome back to my playthrough of Alone in the Dark. Now, uh, before we get into it, I just want to mention something. I'm a little tired today, alright? But that's okay, because I don't need all my wits about me in order to play this game. <laughs> this is one thing I figured out. Um, also, you guys have been telling me in the comments that you have a dodge. Because I was complaining in... A previous video about like I wish you had a dodge in this game apparently you do but like he only dodges forward he just kind of ducks in and, and moves forward so you can't like I mean I guess you can kind of move to the side but he charges forward with his head um, it's never, it's never tutorialized for you or anything the only way that you would know is if you go to the Control layout and find it like ah dodge is B um, But it never pops up like you know press B to dodge in the game It's just like I guess you just find out by using it. it's a pretty intuitive button for it But at this point, I just don't press strange buttons that I'm not tutorialized to press so I didn't know that But now we do so maybe goodbye stun locking goodbye stun locking forever uh yeah, I don't know. What? Let me let me take a look at this. So there's um Gemini, is that what that is? Up there, and then there's another one right there, and then Pisces on the outside. So you got Pisces, Gemini, and then whatever the heck that is. Let's find out by finding the zodiac thingy. Okay, so Pisces is two, Gemini is five, and then the last one I think is, is it Virgo? Which would be eight. So two, five, eight, I believe. We'll try that. Uh, but first I wanna see if I can, ah, oh, I need a key, okay. I just wanna see if I could follow him real quick. Two, five, eight. It's actually very close by to what we had. Oh. Is that not it? 258? Okay, wait. Actually, I think I might have... Is it this way? 258? Yeah, okay. I just got it backwards. Yes, that's where I am right now. Or is that a different sarcophagus? Hello. Oh, it, it's opening. <gasps> it's a passage. Yep, time to shimmy. You know, I said a lot. Um, oh, my flashlight's not working. Oh, no, it is. It's just, it's not doing anything. Wow. I've said a lot of what this game reminds me of. You know, Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, The Colonel's Bequest. Um, all those are very favorable ex um, uh, comparisons, but here's an unfavorable comparison. Um, the Callisto Protocol. It's a little Callisto Protocol-ish. I got an achievement, losing my mind, walk into the desert. Yeah. Is the, uh, is the original 1992 game like this? It's just like, you're in Mexico. Mm. Now you're in the desert. Now you're in a random street alley. Now you're over in this random area. Is it like that? I'm wondering how much of a one-to-one -one comparison this game is with the 1992. Or is it just like a complete and total reimagining? Let's take a look. Okay. I mean, this is kind of cool though. Kind of a cool area. But yeah, it's been, it's been on the tip of my tongue this whole time, but the combat is very Callisto Protocol. Um, and the combat in Callisto is not great, and the combat in this game is not great. It also kind of reminds me of the Sinking City. Although I would say at this point, I prefer the Sinking City. But I'm, I was, I'm also a little higher on that game than most people. That's alright though. You know, we all have our preferences. Some people probably like this game more than the Sinking City, and that's totally fine too. Can I go down there? Oh my god! Well, maybe we don't just drop down. 
was this? Anchor. Am I supposed to, like, find something to put there? Or, uh... Um... Okay, maybe we go over this way. Hello? David Harbour needs to get on the treadmill, I'm just saying. Not like, not like the actor, I mean like... Whoever this guy is. Edward Carnby, that's his name. The, the role, the, the guy whose role he's playing. Alright, you guys get it. Wow, guys, look, we got a rope. A key item. The, they didn't even write a description for this one. They were just like, yeah, you get it, right? <laughs> it's a rope. Do we really need to write a description for the rope? Let's view it. No, no, you can't, you can't look at it in 3D. That's okay. They were just like, no, no, no. A 2D image. Rope.png is all you get. And you know what? I respect it. Beyond the Nile Valley. Ooh. The temple of Nephron lies under our camp. Despite all efforts, that unholy site did not collapse, but sink beneath the sand. The pharaoh is long dead, his name meticulously stricken from all ancient writing. But that stage meant for blood and terror remains. The temple is said to be lightless, built to harbor all the haunters of the dark found in the very depths of our universe. Calling on the gods meant creating a bridge between our world and theirs. The terrible Aldebaran of Taurus, the Black Sun, was seen as the most important star in the night sky. Because, according to the Kitab al -Azif, it was said to be the home of that crawling chaos known as Nyalahotep. Through ancient mechanisms, it was said that the priests could open shafts channeling the light emitted by that strange stone called the Shining Trapezohedron. Several streams pooled together above the statue of that dark man would then be sent through space towards the Black Sun, a message to the gods. The gifts bestowed on the sender are completely undocumented, but often assumes to involve dark blood pacts, where souls are traded for malicious <clears throat> miracles. Wow. Bro is yapping. Alright, machine gun cartridge, let's go. And you know, I'm all I'm, I'm apparently I'm full. I can't I can't have another drink. Uh okay, well. I guess we go put the rope on the anchor, yeah. And then we go down. Where are these? Oh, these are enemies. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I think they were just supposed to be bats flying out. What, what am I looking at? It like directed my attention that way. Am I supposed to be looking at something? I was just gonna put it here. We go. Here. Yeah, but but that one bat that stopped and started like flying in place. I was just like, oh, it's an enemy. Let's kill. <laughs> Time for combat. Flying enemies. A little bit of whiplash there. Wait. Did you ride the rope down before? Oh, it came undone. Oh, that's really lucky. That's really lucky. That, <laughs> what the hell? The rope was like unanchored while we were mid air. If you look at the timeline there, a canopic jar, what is this forewarned? If you haven't seen uh, my video on Forewarned, well, you're missing out. What is that? What's in there? Nothing? A lever. See? Okay, okay, okay. You are, you are, you are an enemy. I knew it. Okay, you're kind of a weirdo, but... Uh... Yeah. 
Look, he's still like me. I'm still moving. Wait, wait. Come on, stealth. Stealth, please. Let's take a look. Oh, here, wait, you guys get. Oh. Kind of gross. He said he finally stopped moving. Stop twitching. Took a while. Okay. Star constellation from one of Jeremy's books. The Can I walk into this, or is it like a laser? Bigger. Must be important. Okay, that's good. Sorry, I wasn't listening to anything you just said. I got a feeling this is it. This is where the contract is hit. But how do I get to it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna have to adjust where the light's coming in, I guess. Or, yeah, I don't know. That thing's like Anubis, except it's a cat. So. Whoops a daisy. Hi, can I come in here? Is it about to collapse on me? Ooh. I guess, it, the, I think this has like adaptive looting in it. I don't know how else to call it. Where like it, it gives you bullets or health drinks or other resources depending on how much you have. And so I think when I'm opening those, it's like, you you definitely have enough. You don't need any more ammo. You don't need any more health. The horizon, key item, okay. A lens crafted with unexpected precision and fitted with a telling hieroglyph. Oh, is it a telling hieroglyph? Ooh. Hmm. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess we just, I mean, do we, uh, do we adjust it Almost somehow? Operational. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna guess that we just keep going. Okay, where's your sledgehammer? Ah, that's what I thought. Oh, sorry, your fire poker, actually. He just kind of pulls it out of nowhere, doesn't he? Yeah! Have at you. Oh, look at this. Okay. Is there another one right there? That was pretty good. Now, is there another one? I think there might be another one. I'm not sure. You guys are driving me batty. Where are they? Looks like the bats are like emitting some kind of sonic frequency. I don't know. Uh. Hi. Okay. So the bat flew in. Flew into the laser and got burned. That's kind of crazy. Do I just burn these up? Boy, it burns that one up. Okay, it burns this one up. Uh, the one way up there. Can we burn this one up? I don't know if this is doing anything that we want it to. Okay. It sure did, bro. Congrats. Anything in there? Oh wow. Um, let's see. A lanyap, children of a dark sun. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take the pickaxe. When you're not using this thing, where are you gonna put it, bro? Come on. Okay. So wait, this, this is something, but we can't adjust this one for some reason. I don't know why. 
Uh, I guess can I go in here? Thank you. Okay. Now this one. Hmm. Oh, we don't have a lens. Why, why not just take the one from up there? I guess we have to get a different one. Okay, before I go in there, let's look in here. This is a, okay, there's a rock. Sweet. Can we go up here? I haven't gone up here yet. Um, I can save these uh, rocks for later when I don't have as much as many resources so maybe they can give me stuff i really wish you could like pocket the bricks maybe not pocket the molotovs but like if you could pocket the bricks that'd be cool so like if that light ever stops shining then you're just entombed here forever that sucks um oh okay okay or not you know Pretty good. Bust this open. I did it. Can I open that? No. Can I adjust this? Oh. The light is gone. Um. Oh, right here. It opens the box. Gives me the star. A telling hieroglyphic. Ooh. So what's in here? Adzi. Oh, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna stop trying to open stuff because the game is just like you're rich. Screw you. Stop asking me for handouts. Okay, so I got one of these. I guess I'll just go back up this way. Uh, yeah, right here maybe. Hmm. Ah, uh, dude. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I'm frying them. It worked. So wait, do I need to have it on there or no? I don't know. Am I... I'm like trying to set all these on fire. I don't know if it's working or not. Okay, well, it worked. Great. Excuse me. Um. Oh, look, he's got three lenses on him. So wait, so if I want to bring this one over, can I do that? Oh, now that one's charged up. Huh? Ah. Oh. What the hell? We can't keep going that way. I thought we had to do all three, but... Oh, wait. Wait, maybe we do? Look, it's not... It's not shining over here anymore. Oh, we need to send all three of them over here? I don't know. It's 
This part kind of reminds me of Resident Evil 5. Is that all he's going to do in this playthrough? Talk about what it reminds him of? You little... I got an achievement. Gangster. Kill an enemy with a Tommy gun. Hmm. Yes. I used a Thomas gun. Look for more lenses to direct the dark light. Okay, yeah, I actually don't need it to be directly shining on that thing. Interesting. Alright, let's go down. I am here. Oh. This goes out. Wait. Huh. Okay. Wait, am I going the right way? I'm trying to go down, back down to the floor. You guys watch that, that show The Floor with host Rob Lowe? It's kind of a weird one. I'm way behind. I watched the first couple episodes though. It's like a, it's like a game show, but I don't know. It's just, it's a weird one. It's like you, you guys school. Are there, oh my God. Other people on trivia? On different categories? Okay. The recoil on this thing is nasty, dude. Yeah, the recoil is crazy. Should have just used like a shotgun there. Hello. Anyway, I'm not going to explain the concept to you. It's kind of a, well, you either get it or you don't, you know? You've either seen it or you haven't seen it. Oh, okay. So we're just back out here. Whatever. Too many people right now I know are just like, well, what are the rules? Explain the rules of the game show. No, you know what? If you want to know, how about you just watch it? All right. I'm not here to summarize life for you. Well, I haven't seen it. Mm, I might watch it if you tell me what it's about. Now, you know what? It's not worth the trouble, okay? Cool, what did that do? I don't know, it just opened the sarcophagus. This is like weird looking sarcophagus. Not quite as royal looking. As I was imagining. What's this? Oh, it's another ad Z or whatever. Open up. What's that? The underworld, guys. We gotta use it. And it wouldn't be an ancient tomb without a bottomless pit of darkness. Hell yeah. What do you say about the floor? I'm watching season five, episode 87 of this anime I really like. It's actually a rewatch. Anyway, can you just tell me what the show's about? I don't want to have to look it up. When I'm bored, I make fun of you guys. <laughs> actually, I just make up one of you guys to make fun of. I don't know. The person I'm describing isn't even real. Pretty sure. Huh. I mean, they might be, though. Wait, okay, well, I want... Well, first of all... Ah. Like, there's so many... Tapestries... That we need to break! Huh. I'm kind of crazy, actually. This isn't going anywhere. Hmm. Um, okay, so I have to go up and do that one, I guess? Breaking Bad? What's that about? Oh. 
Dude, you can't get these two pieces of tapestry? Come on. Oh, is that the idea? We gotta get all three there, and then we're gonna use that one to open up the floor. We've done it. I, I am enjoying burning up the tapestries, actually. I think it's really funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing it. The Sopranos. Hmm. Can't be better than Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Okay. Oh come on. Hit the ones over there. Ah, uh, I can't burn up all the tapestries. I'd better hurry down there. Why hurry? Uh, okay. So I gotta go this way. Kind of annoying. But I get it, here we go. Whenever you'd like to... Take this seriously. Oh, come on. Oh my God, okay. That was lucky. There we go. See, I... Yeah, I'm, I'm gathering that. Yes, from all the earth shaking. See, okay, that dodge is actually sick. Now that I know I can do it, that was awesome. Do you see that? This is some Resident Evil 2 um, tofu speedrun shit. Well, actually it seems like it's not coming down anymore. I don't know. Acknowledge psychological trauma, break through barriers of self-deceit, temperamentic behavior. These are the dark man's terms. The contract. Okay, that's a weird moment. You know what? That's kind of a weird, that's kind of a weird ass moment. I like that. I was, I, I what, one of my uh, requests for this game has been like, I kind of want it to get a little weird. That was a little weird. More stuff like that. Hey. Hey, detective. <sighs> what are you doing? Oh, it's Jody Comer. Great. Here she is. Was it alcohol? God, no. I just got the wind knocked out of me. I think I know how to break the contract with the dark man. What exactly does that mean? Everything going back to normal. Uh, all right. Uh, I found some more information on Dorsetto and the patients. There are some seriously strange things going on here. I'm pretty sure two of the patients are dead and maybe even the clerk. Oh, yeah. I kind of just gave up on worrying about that. Well, <laughs> just keep your eyes open, I suppose. What were you doing again? Jeremy made a pact with the Dark Man to keep all the madness locked inside Dorsetto. All right. I'm gonna break it. I just have to... Where is it? Where's the talisman? It's around your neck. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. I worry, Detective. Don't. I'm fine. I worry that you're not much help on this case. At least you're a good distraction. Trust me. You're getting your money's worth. At this rate, I'm an absolute bargain. This game's a funny one, isn't it? I mean, 
Okay, let's check out our, our clue. The Dark Man uh, contract. Oh. We'd like to view it. Oh. Okay. He must first acknowledge psychological trauma in order to proceed. The lying must stop so we can break through the barriers of self-deceit. Finally, temper manic behavior. Okay. Medicine has failed me. Nothing can be done to dispel the hardwood curse. Only the sacrificial dagger may release the despair from Jacob's eye. Yet, doing so would be the doom of Dasetto. Eh. Let this curse of mine be a weapon for once. I accept your demands. Oh, crawling chaos. Build your prison around this godforsaken hospital. When evil has been starved, I will stay buried forever. Interesting. And that's it so far? Okay. All right, break into Dr. Gray's office. Hell yes, I got an achievement. Where I belong, return to Doceto. Hell yeah. Wait, where are we? Finally. We're just outside. We wait, we were in the attic just now? Can I go back in? What? Well, I wanna go in there. All right, well, find the ooze. This evening need some ambiance. Well, we got a snarky main character over here, guys. Snarky as hell. Wait, we can't? It's blocked? Oh, Doceto has changed. Let's see, it looks like, yeah. See the, the, the pinks there? Colin never thought he'd be so happy to be back at Doceto. It felt like he had crawled through a long, dark tunnel of misery and regret. Now that he was back, Combi could look into the steps mentioned in the contract. But there was one thing that gnawed on him. What exactly did this have to do with Dr. Gray? Eh. Um, see the... These uh, rooms went from being blue to pink, which kind of drives me nuts a little bit, especially since the attic is pink and I can't go into there right now. It kind of annoys me, but things have also changed. We can't go into the drawing room anymore. It's blocked off. Kind of weird. Um, yeah, and like Lottie's room is pink and it was blue before, so interesting. Um, I'm guessing that we'll just have to go down, yeah, to the first floor, ground floor, whatever, and, um, yeah, what does this need? It's a key, a key. of some kind that I don't have. That's fine. <sighs> Got to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that dick, Bella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, not good. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. He don't need nobody all that. Just, Just calm uh. down. It ain't calm yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, Detective Combi seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready. In case he starts anything. Huh. Okay. At least Batista likes me. Let's the see, two is this... orderly still hadn't found Jeremy. Conby figured this was good news. Emily had reminded him about some strange deaths at Dosetto, and Conby wasn't sure who he could trust. Um, I still haven't been able to get to Ruth's or McCarthy's rooms, which is really annoying. Uh, I guess I'll just go through the grand parlor, through the dining room, to the servant stairs, and then I'll check out WC, which apparently stands for Water Closet. Yeah, 
and start my investigation. Huh. Interesting. I don't know what's interesting about it. You know what? Never mind. Don't worry about it. Christ. What the hell was that? I don't know. I'm going in here, though. Eh? Broken spectacles. Hmm. All right. Somebody needs to drain that bathtub. Whose purse is that? Can we search it? No? Let's go to Lottie's room next. Ayo. Preparations for St. John's. Oh. We must have faith that Jeremy's pact with the dark man is a bluff. If we are lucky, our visitors will find him and prove it's all nonsense before night falls. What is true is our attempt to call on her. Too many things have happened for this evening to be in vain. Think of Jack and Cassandra, even Perosi, whose circumstances I can't understand. Grace is our goat without horns. She knows it and will play the role. You must talk to your brother, Batiste. I worry that he will fail us. Mrs. Thompson. So, a goat without horns is uh, a human sacrifice, as you figured out. Undoubtedly by now. Um, something I know from playing Gabriel Knight. <laughs> All right, here we go. Lunacy and the Astarte Artist Colony. Lunacy and the Astarte oh. Artist Colony. A monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto oh, plantation boy. outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Right. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Castle. The colony existed for six years, until one day all 12 members disappeared without a trace. Yeah, I remember that. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the pirates of Ponchartrin. Right. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. Like we already they know can all this. be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Castle did know, because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols of the goddess. It's impossible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it is interesting because of their Seto's history. Oh. Even the name Derseto is the Greek name of a Syrian fertility goddess. In the case of naming the plantation, Derseto was certainly not an accident. We know that Eliah Pickford intended to build a temple for his cult, for he had distributed pamphlets two years prior to the purchase of the land, advertising his intentions. His followers were estimated to be almost a hundred men and women, mostly sailors, maroons, and Cajuns, when the plantation was built. To outsiders, Dorsetto registered as an ordinary slave plantation, which enabled Pickford and his flock to remain hidden for decades. The official story is that the cult lasted until 1862, when the Union Army came and burned down the plantation and scattered all who lived there. Following the Civil War, new people started to congregate in the ruins of Derseto to invent a new fertility goddess, the Shub Nigrath. 
As much as Darseto is a particular name to have heard of, it's not entirely uncommon among the learned. Astarte is equally known and could have been subconsciously chosen by well-read artists. Shub Nigorath is, on the other hand, very uncommon. Almost impossible that anyone in Louisiana would have heard that name. The name is referenced only in rare books like Unausprechlichen Kulten and the Necronomicon, and is believed to be a bastardization of Arabic words meaning pertaining to the dark young. The few paragraphs printed on the goddess are so upsetting that no one in their right mind would want to build a religion resting on such qualities. The Shub Nigarath cult was hard to get rid of, but it is believed that despite the police jailing and killing several cultists over the years, the main culprit in the cult's demise is the cult itself, which seems to line up with every instance of cult activity on Garceto's grounds. When Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army arrived, he described the people at Derseto as malnourished and maniacal. Right. As much I as the army that. tried to save them, they fought back with fervor, as if nothing was going to stop them from slowly destroying themselves. While the disappearance of the Astarte Artis colony remains a mystery, the recurring motif seems to suggest that their fate involved lunacy and a hunger for self-sacrifice to that fertility goddess with a thousand names. Okay. So I wonder if we're going to see a repeat of that here. That was a lot. Um, that was a lot to, to take in. We're learning a lot about Derseto. And it's sordid history, we'll say. Ooh. Pirates of Ponchar Train have a lanyap set. Now see, is this just... Hmm. Okay, it's locked in there. I think uh, Ruth's in there, maybe? So they're gonna sacrifice Grace, is that right? That's crazy. Okay, so we can't um, go across the piazza. We've got to go up the servant stairs, or we can go into the conservatory. No, we can't. There is something in the conservatory, though. Like, there's a, a pink... Pinkish hue there. Let me see if I can find it. Um what is that? Okay, I mean, I do? Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, keep our secrets. Mrs. Thompson, I understand the last week has been busy. Under these circumstances, I find it important to remind you that Dorsetto's concerns are not a public matter, nor is it something that should upset you. Please continue your excellent work, and don't spend a thought on the death of Perosi, or, more importantly, the suicide of Cassandra Beauregard. They should mean nothing to you or the staff. I rely on your loyalty, and trust that your close kinship with the Tabois siblings will keep Tercetto's secrets hidden. Dr. Huh. Gray. Ah, interesting. Ah, you better keep it hush-hush. I mean, the... The title of the note is Keep Our Secrets. They should mean nothing to you. I wonder if Cassandra's suicide is something that you find out um, from uh, Emily's story. Hmm. I wish you, can you go up the... Oh, it's chained off. I was going to say, can you go up the ladder? Okay, you can't. You can't open that. You have to open this. I'm not sure I understand. 
Um, all right. Well, let's go. We can either go up the stairs or down it. Let me see. I know I'm like checking my map a lot. There's actually nothing downstairs, so I guess we'll go upstairs. But then we can't go anywhere once we go upstairs. So then break into Dr. Gray's up. I mean, I can't. It's let's blocked. try. It's blocked. Find an alternative way to the stair hall. So, but if I go, I don't want to run into the orderlies right now. I'm not sure I can trust them. Okay, and then we can't get in here. Oh, a do not disturb sign. Wow, the prisoner of Iceland. Yeah, hell yeah. That that wasn't there earlier, I don't think. Okay, can I go downstairs? Wait. Oh, sorry. I thought maybe I could interact with one of the umbrellas. Let's go down. Can I go downstairs? Is there a way to go up after that? Maybe there's a way to get into the stair. Well, well, I don't know, actually. Let's see. Let's see if, what happens when we go down here, though. Oh, okay. All right, so it's locked. So we can't go down the stairs. We can't go up the stairs. Um, we can't go across the piazza. Can I? Well, I actually don't know. Should I go back to the grand parlor? Maybe it's blocked. Okay. Um, how it's blocked. Wait, so you can't even go back through here. Wait, but how do we get, didn't we go through here? We did. Oh, we, it, that was the sound that we heard. It was stuff falling behind us. We can't go into the drawing room. Okay, I think what we need to do is, okay, I know, I know what we do, I know what we do. Sorry, it just took me, it took me a minute to like remember everything. We go through the conservatory. We go out to the kitchen garden and then we go up the ladder that we drew up earlier. That's what we do. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Yep, there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, final alternative way. Okay. It's really obvious now. I didn't think about it. Okay. This place has gotten more sinister. I would love to be able to go through that door at some point. Yeah, let's go in here. This is where Dr. Gray's office is. Um. Just thought I would do that. Let's go to the clerk's office. There's something in here. There must be a spare key to Dr. Gray's office in here somewhere. There is... Oh. I need the key. There is a safe in here. I don't know how we can get into the safe. Just yet. Open up the safe in the clerk's office. I don't have okay. a combination for this. Or maybe Jeremy did. Yeah. Jer maybe Jeremy did. Okay. Can we find something from Jeremy? The Flying Dutchman. Ooh. We finished uh, some forbidden knowledge. What a terrible thing. Sorry. What a terrible Let's thing to recognize that your betterment was an illusion. That you are so infatuated by the virtue of struggling that despite all your hard work, 
you made no real efforts to ever become well. Or that the treatment becomes such an obsession that instead of letting your wounds heal over time, you tear at the flesh in the hope that it will heal better and faster. If only it would bleed in the way you wanted. Do we ever become well? What do you think, Dr. Gray? So this is forbidden knowledge? I mean... Okay... Okay, so... Maybe Jeremy holds the key to opening the safe. Now what could- what could that mean? Wondering if maybe... Keep our secrets... Oh! Found buried in the sunken temple along with the Dark Man's contract. Why does this have... Wait, why is there a uh, magnifying glass right there? It acts like I can look at something. The Dark Man's contract? Let's see. Hmm... Room number four... Okay, see... Date of admission, 913. Now you don't think that that's the safe combination, do you? 913? Alright, time to get Jeremy out of that contract so we can get the hell out of here. Something tells me I'm gonna have to put my talisman to use. Well, now why did you say that? Let's try 913. It's the day of admission. So, um, 9, 1. It worked. It, that's, that's it. Wow. Okay. Cool. Dr. Gray's office key. Hell yeah. The empty the room. The last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. I must write this down, because if I understand the condition sufficiently, it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new world view, in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this world view, some memories became unmanageable, and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed, or they never existed in the first place. I was wondering about the Who empty room. This? There has never been a guest in the empty room. So, so this isn't really um, portrayed by the voice acting here, but the who wrote this line is a different handwriting, I think, than the rest of it. Who wrote this? Hmm. I mean, look at it. It looks different, right? It looks fresher. Okay, well, are we done in here? No, it's so well. Hang on, we might be able to. Now are we done? Doctor Gray was somehow mixed up in this bit. Well, okay, wait, wait. It's still it's it's red. It's red still. There's a puzzle that I haven't Dr. solved. Doctor Gray's office, all eh. to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. Okay. He sounds absolutely chuffed about it. I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along hmm. with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for, Mrs. Thompson. Oh, we got France. Oh, yes. 
McCarthy's pirate treasure. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. My favorite what? This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. My favorite yum. Like candy? That's a big ass key. Stairwell key. Okay. Oh. Jeremy's treatment. Dearest Dr. Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm eating him from inside. The rot. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. <sighs> Look for Jeremy's x-ray plates in the infirmary is what it says. Which is why I usually try to go to this uh, right corner. Okay. In the infirmary. Wow. Oh, do we finally get to go in there? Hell yeah. So, wait, so there's, a, there's a puzzle over here? It acts like there's a puzzle. There's like a puzzle piece and stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm looking. I, I don't see anything though. Huh. It's gonna drive me crazy that the clerk's office is pink. And that there's apparently a puzzle here. Maybe it's a puzzle I can't solve yet. Because it's not green. Okay. Yeah, so I guess we're going to go down to the stairwell to the infirmary. Interesting. Um, great. Uh, so I think... I think we're going to kind of wrap up for now. Uh, let's see, is this... Oh, sorry. This way. Reception. That same purse is right here. But we'll get in position, uh, I guess right here, because we just saved. Um, yeah, I'm trying to keep up with the story. Um, it seems, you know, it's, it, I did not know that the storyline for Alone in the Dark was so Lovecraftian. Like, directly. Like, using Lovecraftian entities and, um, you know, lore, pretty much. I didn't know that about it. Kind of interesting, though. Um, yeah, I'm excited to go to the cellar, though, and find out what the hell is going on down there. I'll see you guys uh, in the next video in two days. Think critically.